ladies, it's been amazing so far. I definitely appreciate everyone's hearts just sharing so powerfully. So like Kathy said, my name is Deanna and I do co-lead the awesome teen ministry. It's an honor and privilege to be able to share today with you ladies. So the title of my charge is Faith to Keep a Pure Heart. To start us off, I'm going to read an excerpt about the heart. So it says... The Bible speaks of the heart as the governing center of the whole woman, intellectually, physically, and psychologically. Thus, a woman's heart makes her what she is and gives rise to all her thoughts and actions. It is imperative that a disciple be taught to guard her heart and to keep it sensitive and open to God's word. Wow, what an amazing description, right? In order to truly understand what a pure heart looks like, we first must define an impure one. So impurity is defined as containing something unclean, mixed with extraneous or unusual, unwelcome substance, lewd or in chase. Other similar words are tainted, contaminated, filthy, indecent. In contrast, purity is defined as unmixed with any other substance spotless, stainless, free from what vitiates, weakens, or pollutes, containing nothing that does not belong. I don't know about you ladies, but I believe according to this description, my heart is described as the former and not the latter. <laughs> While I would love to say my heart is without blemish and spotless, that would be untrue. But how can we know for sure, ladies? How can we know for sure where our hearts are? Well, let's look at a scripture where the heart is described. So in Jeremiah 27, excuse me, Jeremiah 17. And as you're turning there, just something to keep in mind, you know, if you've ever read a huge chunk of the Bible or the Bible completely, you'll see that there are actually hundreds of scripture on the heart alone. You know, I believe this because the heart is such a vital part of our spiritual health, just as the heart is the vital organ in our physical anatomy. In Jeremiah 17, in verse 9, and this is the Amplified version. I love using different versions. <laughs> it reads, the heart is deceitful above all things and is extremely sick. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? The message version says, the heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful, a puzzle that no one can figure out. Ouch. That sounds pretty hopeless, right? It says our hearts are not only deceitful, they're extremely sick and cannot be fully understood. Well, let's continue to see what it says. In the beginning of verse 10 in the MSG version, it reads, but I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of all things. Whew, well, that's uplifting and hopeful. Isn't it amazing, ladies, that we have a father in heaven who is capable of everything, who understands beyond anything we can imagine and more, who knows the diagnosis of every human heart, who understands the human condition more than anyone. Here's the scary part. Our hearts are the source of sin and pollutes our minds and bodies quickly if we do not turn to God. In Mark 7, 21 through 23, and this is a paraphrase version, it says evil originates from inside a person. Coming out of a human heart are evil, and it lists all these different sins, and all these corrupt things emerge from within and constantly pollute a person. These things emerge from our heart and can take us over when we don't commit to God. In order to keep a pure heart, we have to first obtain one. So my first point is seek, search, and find. Once again, that's seek, search, and find. In Psalm 139, starting in verse 23, the Bible reads, Search me, God, and know my hearts. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. In Psalm 5110, it says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. At this point in David's life, he had completely blown it in sin, turned to the Lord broken, in pleading for a pure heart. He was desperate for a new heart. My question to you ladies, when you blow it in sin, do you ask God for a new heart? Or are you content with the one that you have? Before I was a Christian, I blew it willfully in sin every single day. One of the most common ways was divulging in all forms of impurity, watching pornography, giving over to masturbation, just wanting to hide myself in like exotic and inappropriate books. As a child, 
that had divorced parents, I had to find a way that really just took away the pain, you know? But I know now that there's hope. I wanna challenge you ladies to be women of God who desperately want him to reveal exactly where your heart is so that you can pray for a new one. Some of you may be thinking, well, that's a lot to pray for. You're right, but you should not be surprised. We are sinners and we will sin every single day until we are taken from this life. We need daily renewal. My point number two, the vital organ daily renewal. The vital organ daily renewal. So once God has provided us with a new heart, we have to work hard to keep it through daily renewal. <laughs> we can have daily intimate time with him through Bible reading and application, through prayer, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, I love the KJV version because it says, pray without ceasing. Another way is through openness. In James 5, 16, it says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We need other godly women in our life who hold themselves to the standard that is the Bible. Another way is through encouragement. Hebrews 3, 12 through 13, I won't read it, but it calls us to make sure we do not have a sinful, unbelieving heart. And there's a resolution to that. We're called to encourage each other daily. <laughs> this can look in a, a couple of examples of that encouragement date. So what we call kingdom dates, loving others according to their love language. And definitely one thing that we forget often is fighting for our own encouragement. Just waiting for it to come to us won't work. We all have the charge as Christians to fulfill this scripture. And don't be prideful. For me, when I don't encourage my brothers and sisters, a sinful, unbelieving heart does develop. I begin to doubt God, his promises of my future. When I turn my eyes from the cross, it begins to fix on other things that are not of God. For example, and these are all examples of impure hearts. In a worldly manifestation, it can look like not believing God will grant me the desires of my heart. That's Psalm 37, four. I could, this could look in the way of maybe preening from attention from my male coworkers, even allowing my thoughts to lead me to considering dating in the world. As a single woman, that is not the way God has conducted or wants us to conduct ourselves. That is not the way he wants us to live our lives. We're called to have an undivided and pure heart for God. And in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, it does talk about how he'll give us an undivided heart, one that is comes right along with a new spirit. So with all this being said, I'm gonna give some quick practicals because I know we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so the first one is recognize where your heart is today. In Mark 9, 29, the disciples were like super bummed because they wanted to cast out the demon and the demon possessed boy. And they were like, Jesus, why couldn't we do this? And he said, these type of things only come out through prayer and fasting. So pray and fast. That's definitely something I think everyone should do. Secondly, surrender to correction. I challenge you all to frequently ask a sister or a brother what they see in your character. Ask your spouse, your friends, your housemates, your parents, anyone close to you that will give you godly advice. We must continue to go after being humble because the humble see God. Thirdly, study out the hearts biblically. There's over 800 scriptures that have the hearts. You can find so many great nuggets from that alone. And fourthly, guard your hearts. In Proverbs 4.23, and this is the Passion Translation, it says, the Lord loves those whose hearts are holy and he is the friend of those whose ways are pure. Lady, let's be ladies, let's be women who go after fighting not only to obtain a clean and renewed heart, but also to keep a pure and undivided heart for God. Thank you for allowing me to share and to God be all the glory.